I'm a Joan Munro. I've sort of uh, worked in uh, local government and public services for many decades. Uh, and uh, in 2010, I took the first um, uh, master's program in uh, innovation, creative, and leadership. And since then, I've been doing uh, research, just a sort of self generated research, if you like, uh, research for fun into how local councils can become more innovative. And the current project I'm going to um, quickly tell you about the results from is looking at the um, middle managers uh, in local councils and uh, what they think, their perceptions about how councils can um, become more innovative. Now, I've, I've, I'm looking at middle managers partly because I could find, I will now correct me, but I could find very little research about middle managers and innovation. It was kind of very scanty. Um, middle managers are often um, labelled as being d dinosaurs, sort of innovation resistors of sort of problem. Um, but also they're, 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 I think, sort of a key part of the solution. Innovation, what little uh, studies there were, seemed to say that innovations wouldn't happen unless you got your middle managers on board and actively supporting it. I suspect that's uh, true in local councils as it is elsewhere. Um, but also the research that we did with um, politicians and um, chief execs, um, and then compared with the research we did with frontline front employees, there was a gap uh, between what the top people at the top were saying they wanted to happen and what people at the, um, at the front line were saying was happening in practice. So there seemed to be something going wrong in the middle. So um, first of all, um, you're probably aware with the austerity agenda that uh, lots of local councillors are losing huge amounts of their funding um, and demand for local council services is going up um, partly uh, to the ageing profile of the uh, population um, and their costs are often going up so there's a kind of huge budget gap um, between what uh, uh, councils currently have now and what they're likely to have in the future and this is really uh, uh, forcing the pressure for innovation a survey done last year by the New Local Government Network said that 30% of senior managers expected more than 50% of their future savings to come from innovations. So that's part of the context. Um, I won't try and define innovation for you. It's something we spent on the master's course quite a long time <laughs> discussing. <laughs> with innovation yeah. but in essence and, and actually the different studies have slightly different definitions but I I essentially innovation is something that is new I would say new to the organization because I think there's very little that is truly new to the world um, but it's also it's relevant it delivers it makes uh, a difference and uh, in a local government context it can be new ways of delivering new ways of saving money new organizational arrangements new ways of improving democracy. I don't need to give you lots of examples because I think um, Beth's presentation, if everybody was there for that, she gave lots of examples you know, sort of around public health, around the built environment, around how we look after older people. But I would say that um, there's lots of innovation with the council and some of it's very um, small scale. I was in York recently and they've introduced um, a solar powered litter bin that um, when it filled up, um, it kind of pushes the litter down and kind of squashes it and it also notifies um, headquarters that it, it needs emptying the sort of a small innovation um, or a major game-changing turning the world upside down innovation such as uh, the one that's uh, been happening in adult social care where people who receive care have been given the option to hold their own budget and commission their own services rather than them those being provided by the organization. And I think the challenges for innovation in um, public services are um, very different from those in the private sector where you, uh, you probably judge the success of an innovation by whether a product gets to launch and whether it sells and you make money for it. I think in, 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 in public services it, it's more difficult, but I suppose the ideal innovation would be one that both makes local service users and local residents much happier as well as, well as um, saving lots of money. So, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, uh, the other research I've done is uh, interviews with chief execs around uh, chief execs that were seen as being more ahead on innovation uh, in local government uh, to find out their views of what helps to accelerate innovation. And 19 focus groups uh, with frontline employees 
uh, and 12 interviews with leading politicians, as well as quite a number of presentations to senior managers to sort of discuss my findings. Um, this current research, which I've done with some solids, that's the Chief Execs um, Association for Local Government, we ran uh, a total of 17 focus groups for middle managers in different areas of the country. So, so they've had one council in Scotland, uh, one in um, Devon, uh, one a uh, couple in Suffolk actually, uh, one in London, and uh, one uh, York City Council. Um, and uh, so I'm very briefly and quickly going to tell you what they told me their top priorities were for senior managers and politicians. What would really help to motivate them to contribute and actively support um, uh, innovations. The first and um, one of the two most important things for them was that there was a clear long-term strategic direction and the priorities for innovation were really clear. Um, unfortunately, in too many councils, um, uh, uh, middle managers said that there were hundreds of priorities or they were being encouraged to innovate everywhere and they weren't clear uh, what the council was trying to achieve in the medium term or the long term. Um, the thing probably that middle managers got most frustrated about was feeling that too many politicians had very short term objectives. They were, the politicians were very conscious about the next election which comes at least uh, in at least four years and we're not thinking sort of the longer term. For example, um, they were talking about um, uh, currently in the UK, only 2% of waste is turned into energy, whereas in Sweden it's 100%. But uh, middle managers were saying, actually, to set up a scheme like that probably takes 10 years, and it's getting politicians to sort of commit that far ahead to invest in it. They felt that um, a lot of politicians uh, were still, in a way, in denial about uh, the financial problems that they were facing and the future financially, uh, and weren't sort of taking hard decisions about what services to stop. Uh, and without that services stopping, they didn't have sufficient time to really work on developing the innovations for the future. The second um, big priority, or biggest priority, uh, for middle managers uh, was leadership for innovation. Uh, they wanted uh, senior managers and politicians to be really clear about what they were trying to achieve, but also to sell it, to vote it, to be passionate about it, to kind of explain what it would achieve. They also wanted to be convinced that what um, those above them were promoting, the innovation ideas, were actually realistic and achievable. They weren't kind of fluffy pipe dreams, that they were actually sort of something that would deliver their uh, intentions. And they stressed particularly <coughs> the importance of personal communication, that actually um, sort of sending out an email sort of saying we've got this great idea for innovation just didn't cut it. It was, I think it was uh, actually an issue that came up in the master's course we discussed was about trust. They wanted to sort of see the person face to face and think, this is the person I want to follow, I believe in, and I think they're going to make it happen. So personal communication was very important. They also wanted leaders who delegated them responsibility and had sort of clear plans for how innovations would be put into practice, sort of realistic plans. And um, very strongly, uh, they wanted to be involved in discussing innovations. They felt there was far too much sort of top-down, we've decided this, here it is, plonk, you go away and deliver it, when actually... They, with the operational experience and the probably greater knowledge of uh, problems on the ground, could actually inform that um, idea and make it a much more sort of realistic idea. So there was lots and lots of complaints about communication being uh, one way rather than two way, uh, and their ideas and concerns um, being listened to in a tokenistic way or not listened to at all. The uh, the fourth big um, priority for them was sufficient time and resources for developing innovation. Um, that just, you know, people had these great ideas, but you can't kind of um, um, make them happen on thin air, that you actually needed a sort of devoted time and devoted resources uh, to, to making them happen. And I think, again, it's something else that we discussed on the course a lot. In fact, we had a whole module on it, which was uh, 
you know, it, you can have these wonderful ideas for innovation, but the, the real challenge is making them happen, and that takes uh, graft and determination and, and hard work. So sort of building in that time. The, the uh, fifth area was um, an organisational culture at sports innovation, um, which I probably don't need to discuss in, in great detail, but it was, uh, uh, a lot of it was about a culture where you are supported in taking well thought through and calculated risks, where if there are failures and there's bound to be failures along the way, you're supported in managing them rather than sort of blamed and sacked. Um, and quite a lot about um, uh, uh, celebrating the innovations that exist. One of the uh, great things about the, the focus groups that we had is the managers got really excited about hearing about each other's innovations and realised there were a lot of innovations happening in their councils that they didn't know about and felt that the senior managers should be sort of promoting them uh, much more. Um, then in some councils, it wasn't all councils, but quite a lot of councils, they felt that the uh, corporate services were not actively helping to deliver innovations. A lot of corporate services had um, hugely bureaucratic procedures and HR, procurement, finance, health and safety and so on. And that you just, you know, unless you were completely determined and passionate about your innovation, you got blocked at every turn. And they felt that corporate services really needed to change their attitude to helping people achieve their innovations rather than sort of putting barriers in the way. And specifically, um, there was a big issue about technology um, and you know, a lot of um, innovations are obviously technology supported, techno technology driven, um, but many uh, councils didn't have the level of technology expertise needed to sort of really make those happen. Um, and uh, they also, there was very strong support and indeed, uh, unfortunately, is an area where probably there was more criticism than anything else, that there needed to be a lot more um, cross-service working on innovations. I mean, for the major innovations that councils need now to kind of address the budget challenges, they're not going to happen in just one service, one department. They need to, there'll be a sort of integration um, across services. And many middle managers felt that their directors too much defended their own services um, or sort of undermined corporate uh, efforts and, and didn't kind of foster the kind of cross-council <coughs> working necessary. Um, and the final thing was persistence. Uh, a lot of, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the difficulties in, in innovations is often the implementation. There are a lot of complaints about senior managers uh, changing their priorities midway or losing interest in a project and taking away the resources and really not sticking with it long enough to make sure that it actually got completed. Um, just, uh, I've been given a five minute warning, so I'll sort of speed up a bit. Um, what was interesting about the research is actually um, the four different groups that actually agreed about five things, so that was, I won't go through these in detail, but actually there was a huge amount of agreement uh, um, in these five areas about the sort of what helped to encourage innovation. Um, the main difference between what the uh, politicians and the chief execs said and what the uh, frontline employees and middle managers said was they didn't feel it was happening well enough, that it wasn't actually been put into practice, that there was sort of, uh, these seem to be the things that people think helped to encourage innovation, but they, uh, they weren't actually being done uh, by those at the top. So very quickly, some areas where I thought more attention was needed that very little was said. Um, Beth gave a, a great example this morning about children's services in Lambeth and Salat and the way that they were involving local people and listening to local people. Um, senior managers and um, politicians said a lot about the importance of local residents and listening to local residents. We didn't find that much evidence from middle managers that they were doing it in any depth and that may be partly because of, of time. We're, and um, I, as, as you know, any effective innovation process starts from really understanding what the issues were. Uh, so people were too focused on, I've got a good idea, rather than really understanding what the issues were before they started having ideas. They didn't see, um, a lot of um, managers talked about networking with other councils and the importance of le learning from other councils, and that is really important. A lot of innovations in councils are actually adaptations from elsewhere. But there didn't seem to be that many that were really sort of looking outside um, of the UK. So I was, I was thinking about kind of 
looking to Japan, how are they coping with their older people, looking to uh, Holland, what are they doing to avoid flooding and so on, a lot more scope for looking elsewhere. And surprisingly, given, again, it's probably the way that councils could make big savings and improve services for um, uh, uh, service users, is there wasn't as much talking about partnerships um, with uh, both the private sector and uh, other public business, public sector, as we expected. And, and nobody talked about commissioning for innovation, given that lots of services are commissioned to the private sector. I thought that was very surprising. And very few talked about effective uh, delivery mechanisms. They saw themselves as deliverers and they would get on and do it. But if you're going to have bigger, more major innovations, actually, um, and chief execs said this, you need a kind of uh, an effective delivery process that make, make, moves things forward. We felt that um, middle managers uh, in some councils um, were a lot further forward in their thinking about innovation, and those seem to be the councils where uh, they'd had their leadership skills, opportunities to develop their leadership skills. They had opportunities to develop their skills around innovation process, creative design process, and so on. And they had a sort of more sophisticated understanding of how you operate effectively in a political environment. So our overall conclusion uh, was actually we didn't find any dinosaurs at all. All the middle managers we met were actually really understood the need to achieve um, innovations and wanted to contribute to them, but they felt that the people above them needed to do a lot more to do all the things that they said that would unlock that sort of golden key that would um, would make them key innovation allies rather than um, than blockers. And actually, uh, involving middle managers would make uh, innovation proposals a lot more uh, relevant, realistic, and robust, and much more likely to succeed. And finally, just. Uh, quickly um, show you, this is the uh, local council's innovation framework uh, that I first developed from the interviews with chief execs and as the research has gone on I've tweaked it a little but essentially it seems to have stood, stood the test of time and it's available uh, if uh, um, senior managers or politicians or whatever want to kind of use it as a review tool that's kind of behind each of these blobs is uh, a few questions they can ask themselves and think about whether there's more they can do uh, to achieve innovation. So the, um, the framework's available um, and, and other materials, and the full report will be published, um, I think it's going to be next week, the 24th of April, and my uh, details are there if people want to contact me for more information.